And we're joined now by Austin Goolsby, the chairman of the President's Council of Economic Advisers. Welcome back to this week. Great to see you again, Christian. So you've heard all that. John Berman set it up. This Friday, this last jobs report was meant to be the acid test. What is that telling us? Is the recovery threatened? Well, hold on. Uh, and I, I said last month when we had an excellent jobs report, 100,000 above expectations, and I said again this last Friday when it came in below expectations, don't, don't make too much of any one month's job report because they're highly variable. You want to look at a little bit of a trend to get a more accurate barometer. And the overall direction is, yes, somewhat slowed from the stiff headwinds of gas prices of the events in Japan, of some of the events in Europe. But overall, the last six months, we've added a million jobs in the private sector. Right. But Every economist, including many of your uh, advisors and colleagues, have said that in order for this to be sustainable, you have to actually have above 150,000 jobs per month. And it was way below that well, this month. It, it, and in the three months before that, it was well above it. What, what I'm emphasizing is that every economist knows that the monthly numbers are highly variable. So you want to look at a little bit more than just one month before concluding so on a trend. what happens if this same kind of report comes out next month, what does that then tell you? Well, look, uh, what we know is that we have moved a long way from when the economy is in a rescue mode, the private sector's in free fall, and the government is the only thing standing between us and falling into another Great Depression. Mm -hmm. We were losing 780,000 right. jobs a month when the president comes into office. Fast forward to now, we've added one million jobs over the last six months. If we face stiff headwinds that are, are shocks like the, like the Japanese earthquake, we, we have to deal with that. But I think the, the trend is relatively clear. But what do you say to the American people when so many economists were expecting something, according to a Bloomberg survey, of 165 to 170,000 to be created this month to see the unemployment come down a little, which it didn't. What do you say to the American people about that? Where's I mean, the, the light, the in other words? The first thing that I say is the same thing I said one month ago when it came in the opposite, 100,000 above expectations, and that is, let's not conclude too much of anything from one report. Let's look at what's happened over six months. And what has happened over six months is we've added a million jobs in the private right. sector. The president has enacted, we, we passed a tax policy in December, which has come into place this year and will continue over the course of this year to put, to give a payroll tax of $1,000 plus to 150 million workers and to give direct incentives for business to start mm -hmm. investing. And they've accumulated money on their balance sheet. Our, our effort now as a government should be to get the private sector to help them stand up and lead the recovery. It can't, the government is not the central driver of recovery. Right, but again, it, it is slower than expected. So economists are asking and people are asking, is this kind of a wake-up call, do you think, to sort of shift the political debate from what's been all about debt reduction and shift it back to uh, job creation? I mean, is this an opportunity, for instance, to try to talk about creating jobs and adding maybe another stimulus? Let's say there was no politics involved in a perfect environment. What would you do to get this off the, the slow burner? Well, I, I would say two or three things. The first is, the president has never stopped talking about jobs. For him, right. the growth strategy is the number one issue. Now, we must live within our means. We have a moment that we can talk about long-run deficit reduction, and the vice president's leading an effort to do that that the president has asked him to. But the president is getting up every day. To, on Friday, right. he's going out to Ohio to talk about jobs in manufacturing, which manufacturing is having its best employment year in almost 15 years. And yet that years. came down as well, manufacturing jobs. Well, durable goods manufacturing was... But what uh, specifically can you do to change okay, this? Okay, so the, we, we have shifted in the economy from a rescue phase, which is government directed, to a phase in which government policies have got... We've got to rely on government policies that are trying to leverage the private sector and give incentives to the private sector to be doing the growth. And that, so the president has started these tax cuts that will continue over the rest of this year, 
has put in place this regulatory review in which all of the major agencies are going to go through, find any outmoded regulations, ones that are excessively costly for their benefits, find ways to streamline Would there be more the free trade agreements. Tax, tax cut holiday? Well, the, we still, there will be more payroll tax cut over the entire course of this year. It's a, more than $1,000 a worker for 150 million workers. The free trade agreements, trying to increase exports, which are rising at 15% annual rates. The infrastructure bank that the president has called for, which again is trying to leverage, using government incentives to get private capital to enter and help grow the economy. That, that, those are the things that we've got to be doing. And I would just emphasize the president's plan is putting us on the right track. Over the last 15 months, we've added more than 2 million jobs in the private sector. That's far in excess of what it was so in the comparable not, period after the last recession. Are you not worried? Well, I mean, a, a report that's about to come out is saying that this is the longest jobless recovery. It's going to come out this month that it'll take more it's than 60 months recovery. of GDP recovered. It'll take okay. till 2016. It is not a jobless recovery. That is an incorrect mm -hmm. phrase. After the last recession, in this comparable period, post-recession, we had lost 100,000 jobs. Mm -hmm. We've added more than 2 million jobs. There's a major difference between a jobless recovery mm -hmm. and a very deep hole that we're cr climbing our way out of, and that is what the position so, we're in. A part of the hole that everybody's looking at right now is the debt ceiling. Do you anticipate that this is going to be resolved over the next uh, over the next month or so? Is I do. I do. Th I, d I definitely think it's going to be resolved because it has to be. The U.S. is a nation that pays its bills, and and ultimately we're not going to decide that we refuse to pay the bills. Are that, you concerned that, we that Moody's is saying that it may look at downgrading if certain benchmarks aren't met? Look. I think what Moody said is you have to pay your bills, and if you don't pay your bills, th there are going to be consequences. And I think everybody agrees with that. Now, I I'm relatively optimistic that because you've seen leaders on both sides of the aisle uh, saying they don't want to push this all the way right up to the to the edge of the of Treasury's authority of, of what can be done. This is not an alarm clock. It would be extremely dangerous to get right up to the edge, or you've seen some people even saying, well, it'd be okay if we defaulted for a short period. That's not true. We shouldn't do that. We should resolve this over the next month. Austin Goolsby, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Great to see you again. Thank you.